So what does it mean to be fearless? Let's have a discussion. A couple of volunteers. What does being fearless mean to you? Anybody? There's about 250 people here. <laughs> okay. Stepping outside of your comfort zone. Anybody else? Allowing yourself to commit to something fully. That's right. In the back, yes. Uh, do it anyway. Do it anyway. That's good. Those are all great definitions. So when you look up the definition of fearlessness in the dictionary, you'll see to be bold, to be brave, to be courageous, to be free from fear. Fearlessness. However, I've learned that to be truly fearless it doesn't mean that you're, that you're unafraid. You're going to have fears. You're going to have doubts. You're going to have a lot of them. But it's the way that you react, despite those things, that scare you to death. I'm not saying that you won't have any fears. But when fear comes at you, the way you react is different. And so who believes that Dr. King was a fearless individual? Show of hands, anybody? Okay. So for those of you who didn't raise your hand, we have a, I got a clip I want to show you. We're going to see if that maybe changes your mind a little bit. Uh-oh. Sorry, Kelly. You good? I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now because I've been to the mountaintop. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. But I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried. About anything, I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. That, that speech just gives me chills listening to that. Like Dr. King was truly a, a fearless individual. Did, did you hear the words that he said, how he spoke with such confidence? And, and I don't know if you guys know this, but the day after this speech, Dr. King was assassinated. His life was taken. He was murdered. However, he still spoke with so much confidence. And this is during the 1950s and 60s. We're going to do a brief history lesson. In the 1950s and 60s, a person of color was, was not supposed to speak like that. With such confidence and fearlessness. We're talking about the times of Jim Crow. Like, these were state laws that enforced racial segregation. Even though in the United States, segregation was illegal. In the South, they said, no, they enforced racial segregation. We're talking about whites only signs, no colors allowed. We're talking about times where people of color were, were abused by law enforcement, like publicly. Not even just law enforcement, your, your neighbors, citizens in society. Your neighbor could cause harm to you as a person of color and nothing would happen. But we're talking about real fear. Dr. King was talking during the times of beatings, hangings, and bombings. He knew that every time he spoke, himself, his family, his children, they would, not they could, they would experience violence, be attacked. He went to jail over 29, he was thrown in jail over 29 times. He only lived to the age of 39. 
So with all this happening around him, how was he able to still fight for justice? How was he able to do that? I think it's because he had a choice. Martin Luther King didn't have to fight for civil rights. He didn't have to speak up. There was a lot of people during that time who didn't speak up. He didn't have to do it. When I look at everything that's going on in the world today, with politics, with war, with genocide, with socioeconomic disparities, it comes more and more relevant to me that people don't have to speak up. Even though things are terrible around us, like people don't have to say anything. We all have a choice. Dr. King made a choice. And we have all in some way, shape, or form benefited from that choice. 